Welcome to a Germs Journey News Desk, an international dialogue about the challenge of supporting community relevant public health communications. Find out more about a Germs Journey at our website, germsjourney.com, or find us on Twitter at Germs Journey. Hello, welcome to a Germs Journey News Desk. And today I'm really pleased to say that we're joined by uh, Hiran uh, Pandit and Baslor Rahman from Bangladesh. And you both are involved with the uh, Bangladesh NGOs Network for Radio and Communication. Uh, so let's let's kind of um, find out how you are first of all is 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 everything well at the moment in bangladesh is it uh uh, uh is are, are you guys uh feeling uh safe and secure yeah thank you very much uh, for organizing um, this very important uh, uh discussion uh yeah uh, in bangladesh now we uh, now we are uh, uh, facing adaptation phase basically so after the adaptation phase covid 19 now vaccination uh, phase is going on and almost 10 million people has already received the um, uh, first dose and second dose is uh, vaccine uh, so this is a, a very good news uh, for us and uh, vaccine vaccine program is going on now and gradually uh, rural areas um, COVID-19 impact uh, gradually go down and uh, urban level also um, uh, go down also but um, uh, according to your um, uh, variant, new new variant so we are very much concerned new variant now because uh, last week basically uh, we face our we we observe our big uh, uh, people's uh, uh, people's uh, holiday called Idul Ajha, Eid Day of the Muslim community. You know, Bangladesh is one of the majority Muslim countries, so lots of people gathering. So they don't maintain the uh, three COVID precautionary, uh, make distance and also mask and uh, as well as other thing so now we are uh, we have a very concern uh, maybe uh, due to eid gathering uh, maybe uh, level of degree of corona uh, may be increase so this is the situation on the other hand our community broadcasters almost one uh, 1000 community broadcasters are uh, very much safe and um, some of uh, already uh, already taken a vaccine also and uh, they are maintaining uh, cleaning um, at the radio station level and as well as they are uh, uh, continuing their broadcasting uh, community broadcasting so let's let's kind of un unpack this a little bit because um you've um shared this expertise through UNESCO and your networks uh, internationally but could you just start for, for the kind of the uninitiated listener um, what's your model of community radio and how have you been using this uh, through the uh, why has it been valuable through the pandemic uh, yes uh we assess basically empirically not academically so uh, uh, we, we are also feel we did a academic research also very serious way but uh, regular basis uh, we are doing empirical uh, research uh, learning by doing doing by learning every day we interview with our broadcasters and as well as uh, community people and as well as corona related administrative committee by the government so uh, we are trying to assess the uh, impact basically this is the empirical way not a academic way so 
uh, we need this also. We, we are feelings also. So we need a academic uh, serious research in this matter because uh, uh, community radio station um, uh, the doing a lot of things as well as our community people also contribute a lot of things, say like voices, empowering voices to amplify their voices and as well as empower of the community people like this. So, and as well as voices of the disadvantaged community, it is a, a number one areas of our campaign program. And that, that's one of the key um, foundation stones, isn't it, of community radio, that voice empowerment. How, how, what's the tradition in Bangladesh for supporting community radio to do that? Uh, uh, basically, you know, we have a, uh, a lots of disadvantaged community. Uh, so uh, during the COVID time, uh, we have to have uh, listen to the uh, voices from the disadvantaged community, uh, thorough community radio to the local policy maker, to the local administration uh, like this. Uh, so uh, that's why basically uh, uh, voices, uh, empowering voices through community radio, it is uh, very, very important uh, 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 for us. Could, could you give us an example of that? Is there somebody that you've been working with recently where you've, you, you know, you've, you, you've seen the difference where you're putting that into practice? How, how does this work on a day-to-day -day basis? Yes, uh, so according to our assessment, Say within our community radio areas, uh, areas, uh, lots of uh, disadvantaged community uh, are getting uh, support for uh, safety net support from the government side. But outside of the community radio area, lots of disadvantaged community is still waiting for the government supported like vaccination and other things. So this is a huge, uh, uh, huge uh, difference between community radio areas. Uh, disadvantaged community and outside of the community radios the disadvantaged community and also because you know um, outside of the community radio people do not access to the media do not access to uh, their express their voices do not participate the uh, governance exercise governance process but within the community radio area due to the community radio people access to the community radio face to the local administration and getting support instantly. So you've seen a direct, tangible difference in areas where community radio is active as opposed to areas where there's less activity from community radio. Why, 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 do, you yeah. think it's, why do you think it's made that difference? What is it about community radio uh, or and, and other forms of community media that has has made that difference. What is it there in the as you say about the kind of the the, the approach, the process that's helped to make that difference? Yeah, this is a this is a due to the process because uh, you know in Bangladesh we have no much more community radio. We have only twenty uh, twenty one community radio, very very certain areas. So uh, due to that. Uh, because community radio follow the local dialect, community radio follow the participation, community radio follow address the disadvantaged community. Uh, so that's why basically uh, these type of findings basically um, come up. So, so when you're talking to say an NGO organization or a health organization or, or, or local or national government what do you explain to them about why that participation and voice empowerment and local representation is important do they do it's it's like you know what why would they use this model as opposed to say a mass communications model what's what's the difference between the two what practical difference does it make okay Basically, uh, we are creating three areas, say influencing local power, one of the things. Another one is 
uh, creating a space for the mass people. Here is the empowering, another one point empowering is community people. and also empowering community. So there are three areas: empowering community, creating a space for the people, and also influencing power. Uh, for us, com communication is nothing without any agenda. So our agenda is creating a space for the people through community radio. Our agenda is influencing power through community radio. Our agenda is create a space of the people through community radio. This is our communication model. Can I bring Hiran in at this point um, to ask your experience of this? How 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 has it worked in practice with you? What 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 are there any observations that you've noticed about how? this works uh pardon pardon uh, can you explain uh, again yeah um so so influencing empowering and creating okay. space right. um on on a, on a on a radio station how how do you make that happen so what do you how does the training for your community reporters for example how does that how how do you help to orient there? Because the we, we the alternative is that they can find things on Facebook or on YouTube, and they can find different things. There's lot you know uh, uh, you know people can access different forms of media, satellite TV channels and commercial radio stations. But you're training uh, 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 reporters and producers and program makers from the community themselves. How, how, what's that like? How, how do you go about doing that? Okay, thank you very much. Uh, basically, uh, uh, when we organize a dialogue, that time we invite the policymaker at, at the studio. And as well as, we, as, well as we, we invite the local power holder at the studio. So there are two areas, duty, duty holder and duty bearer. Uh, say like uh, supply side and demand side. Say so we, we invite uh, uh, this type of uh, stakeholder of the studio and discuss the agenda. So uh, on the other platform, there is no scope to face-to-face -face discussion or to th threadhold discussion. So uh, so our model is, this is a very interesting. So policy maker is there, duty bearer is there, duty holder is there, and NGOs is there. So agenda also there. So this, they are discussing the agenda. Uh, wh what is the problem? What is the challenges? And what is the way forward? Sometimes we see within the studio, within the discussion, problem was solved. That's Some a, of. Yeah, I mean, you've used a term which isn't used here in the UK, which is duty holders. Uh, we talk about public officials, government officials. Um, we yeah. don't call them duty bearers and duty holders. And maybe yeah. that's something that's that's an interesting distinction that might yeah. you know we, we, we can learn from. Um when, when so so the people, the citizens that are brought together with these duty holders, it takes some time to get confidence to question and part and and discuss some of the topics with these people how, how do you how do you prepare those citizens to engage with those duty holders okay this is we called setting a local agenda uh, so our one of the objective is uh, creating uh, influencing power that means community people can avail to setting their own agenda to their uh, to their uh, local administration as well as local representative. Our one of the good advantages is uh, we have a, a five-year plan and as well as we have a commitment of the Prime Minister office uh, regarding the safety net, regarding the disadvantaged communities rights like this. So we basically using that type of government regular document. Say your five years document says this and that. So what is your reaction, sir? Uh, and uh, what is your activity in our area, sir? And like, uh, say, Prime Minister uh, uh, guideline this and that. So what is your uh, uh, progress uh, to implement this commitment in our community radio areas? Then 
uh, then local government people as well as locally re elected bodies basically uh, uh, express their challenges way forward and also they are trying to provide some facts and figure and immediately our demand group right holder they told okay sir you you say you are providing this and that services but still i am waiting still uh, still i have no uh, i do not receive this type of facilities sir what happened sir then local representative asked to the official what happened uh, please uh, look this case uh, very immediately why happened <laughs> So, so there's an interface there. Now, one, one of the things we're making, uh, it's easy to make an assumption of, is that information is equal. And yeah. we're living in a world where there's a lot of deliberate misinformation. Uh, what are the challenges that you faced as a, as a network uh, and, a, and as a, a community of practitioners and stations yourselves to challenge misinformation? Yeah, yeah. Hirenda, can you contribute something regarding misinformation, disinformation, and malinformation? Hirenda? Hirenda, are you online? He's muted at the moment. Okay. Okay. Uh, yeah. uh, 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 can, can you contribute something regarding uh, how community radio handle misinformation, disinformation, and malinformation? Uh, uh, thank you so much. Uh, BNNSC has been working uh, with the radio stations for countering uh, misinformation, fake news, disinformation, and malinformation uh, through uh, uh, different type of uh, programs like raise their awareness among community people, countering misinformation, uh, and not only COVID and, and uh, on various issues. Uh, what is the uh, misconception and uh, misinformation? How it is uh, spreading during uh, during the COVID crisis? There are some myths and misconception are prevailing, uh, such as uh, different types of uh, myths are there uh, to debunk this type of myths. Uh, different types of awareness raising and sessions are conducted. Uh, through the community radios among the community people and community people uh, gradually the community people uh, develop their uh, latest in, uh, knowledge scientific based knowledge and information uh, from this uh, this type of uh, information received from the community radio stations and uh, we, uh, the community radio stations uh, uh, are also working uh, to uh, uh, information from different sources, uh, and uh, they always um, justify the new uh, information uh, or it is true or not, and uh, collect reliable information from um, uh, from us and other sources also, and uh, verify the information through fact checking, like uh, like this way they are working for countering misinformation and many information. Please both do add something uh, in addition to my yeah, uh, yeah fact checking and verification is very important. So our community broadcasters basically try to identify uh, first the information, and then uh, they they are um, uh, they are working with fact checking and verification with the local government, and then again come to the. Uh, uh, peoples, the, this is the false news. Please do not believe it. Our local government authority says this and that. Please follow this and that. Not please follow uh, that one. And and what gives the listeners of your of these stations a sense of trust in that information, that checked information? Because there's lots of information out there isn't there we can suffer from information overload and we've got different platforms that we can go out to as a if you like as a touch point a point of trusted a trusted guide a trusted source of information what is it that um the the radio stations do that help to engender that sense of trust okay basically uh, our experience is basically 
মিস ইনফরমেশন ডিস ইনফরমেশন এন্ড ম্যান ইনফরমেশন ম্যাল ইনফরমেশন বেসিক্যালি ক্রিয়েটেড বাই দ্য ফেসবুক এন্ড পিপল বেসিক্যালি শেয়ার দে আর লটস অফ ফ্রেন্ড এন্ড অলসো ভিলেজ টু ভিলেজ লাইক দিস সো সো আওয়ার কমিউনিটি ব্রডকাস্টার বেসিক্যালি আইডেন্টিফাইড দিস কেস যে হুইস টাইপ অফ মিস ইনফরমেশন ডিস ইনফরমেশন বেসিক্যালি স্প্রেড বাই দ্য ফেসবুক ইউ নো ইন আওয়ার ভিলেজ বেসিক্যালি ফেসবুক ইজ ভেরি পপুলার and as well as uh, other one uh, uh, social media called emo i m o emo uh, you 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 got the point emo uh, 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 facebook and emo i m o emo <laughs> yeah one, so one type of one type of apps apps uh, which is uh, possible to um, chat with uh, uh video chat uh, apps um, uh, is called video email. voice call voice 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 call voice call basically so so our uh, broadcasters basically try to identify uh, from the facebook and as well as emo uh, this type of uh, uh, misinformation disinformation and man information then immediately they check with the local health official as well as local administration and also as well as local politician also the sir this is the uh, uh, fact basically spread by the facebook so now what is the the counter uh, thing in this regard uh, or what is the right thing in this regard then they develop their messages and again they uh, they broadcast the uh, uh, real uh, thing this is the real thing this is the fact thing one of the challenges with misinformation is it can be very plausible you know people dress it i've done the scientific investigation but it's not plausible it isn't you know it's it's false and it's dressed up as fake um how how do what form does the um the challenge come from it come in from the community reporters yeah 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 it it is a big challenge uh, you rightly address it is a very big challenge so Uh, because uh, uh, this challenge basically we overcome through our doctor uh, because uh, our uh, uh, all, uh, uh, our 20 community radio mobilize uh, almost 300 uh, doctors registered doctors uh, uh, for the uh, for the, for fighting the uh, phone in program like this we call hello doctor so basically Uh, when our community radio broadcast starts identify any misinformation so immediately doctor can respond through their program so it is very effective uh, from the uh, community and as well as doctor side because people believe doctor not a people believe uh, other uh, health related matter people believe to doctor so that we utilize the doctor community so now Uh, we mobilize 300 doctors basically uh thoro 20 community radio station and and they become were they familiar with radio before then was that something that you uh, had to train those doctors on how to engage with people through 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 radio uh, uh, not 300 all but some of some of because uh, our radio station uh, broadcasting the primary health care program earlier say like family planning Uh, say like uh, vaccination or the epi like this so some of not a 300 but this is a great opportunity we mobilized uh, almost 300 doctor uh, for fighting uh, the um, covid-19 misinformation disinformation and malinformation and as well as advice uh, advice for the covid related matter now we we identified you've identified what you call the fourth industrial revolution and the proliferation of alternative networks uh, can you just ex- explain the thinking behind that and what it means in practice uh, yeah there is a two thing basically uh, due to the due to the social media and fourth industrial revolution impact uh, community people uh, uh, basically do not receive program do not listen program through their uh, traditional radio set 
so now they are listening through their program through mobile uh, uh, mobile or uh, smart set so that's why uh, people uh, would like to see the picture graphics like this people do not uh, wait to listen 30 minute program one hour program three hour program like this so that's why this is the one empirical our assessment so that's why we revisit the radio format and demystify the radio format say like magazine program earlier we have a magazine program 30 minute now we have a 15 minute so earlier we have no infographics now we are providing some of infographics uh, to the people earlier we have a uh, some program not interactive now we have a in very very interactive program earlier our broadcaster uh, the go to the administration go to the locally elected bodies uh, for interview uh, uh, now they are uh, taking interview through online basis so uh, this is the matter and other thing is uh, the radio listening habit basically gradually go down gradually go down in Bangladesh also. People are now go to the OTT open uh, uh, over the top platform because they have a internet, they have a mobile phone like this. So we have to have revisit our program like this content on demand like this. So this is a big challenge also community radio broadcasters. How we transform us uh, to content on demand like video on demand BOD or COD <laughs> like this so this is a very big challenge and uh, we need a lot of uh, training also for our broadcasters because mm, our broadcasters basically traditional broadcasters now we need a modern broadcasters they are using Facebook live they have to have using uh, YouTube they have to have uh, uh, develop a infographics. So this is a big challenge uh, we are facing. And uh, some of radio station already started uh, uh, visual radio. Uh, say, say they are broadcasting news. People uh, see the studio. And as well as who are reading the newspaper, who, who are present the news. So people would like to know. <laughs> yeah. I, it it the, the explosion of formats and social media forms that we can use uh, it it can be it can be very disconcerting but there's still yeah. there's still a need for traditional forms of broadcast radio um if you think of data poverty and access you know rural areas typically don't have as good internet connection as urban areas and and yeah. how does that shape your thinking in terms of you know here in the uk there seems to be a rush towards digital engagement through social media and that ignores large numbers of people who don't have internet access England, no, so, uh, we are thinking we will continue two type of mixing mixing basically two type of uh, broadcasting system okay mm, uh, one is uh, using facebook youtube and other ott pl platform it is okay and side by side uh, internet uh, 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 some places there is no internet uh, like uh, your comments so uh, we would like to broadcast uh, through a spectrum and uh, they will listen through mobile phone set like this so so this is a mixed model basically uh, we would like to continue like this I, I saw an article in about Brazil the government in Brazil are, um, are mandating that uh, mobile phones smartphones have an FM receiver activated in them because people in rural areas can't access data as cheaply as you can in in other areas, uh, so there's 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 it's interesting, isn't it, that even um, even though that the the push for the developed world, you know, the the, um, the 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 large economies is towards digital engagement, we can't forget that there's still requirements for access, and in emergencies, 
uh, having a trusted source of local information is one of the vital uh, elements to this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What would what would you want to say to maybe people here in in the UK about lessons that we might learn that we might adopt in the way that you know from your experience of what's important and what's relevant? No, England also our one of the model area, model area. So that uh, always we try to learn from England at. Uh, it would be very nice also if we uh, if we get some uh, uh, knowledge from the uk it would be help for us also yeah but i i, I mean I, I i take the view that we've actually got a lot more about to learn about community radio from you because you you're in a different circum- set, uh, set situation you've got a different set of circumstances um one of the problems here in the uk has been that people we're, we're a wealthy country but people assume that information is shared equally and that people have access uh, and they haven't considered how many people in, set in the city I live in, in Leicester, don't have English as their first language, for example. And there, there isn't a focus on producing content, which is, trust, you know, our, our, the people who run our health services and the communications managers in those services are often... They, they have one particular model, which is the mainstream commercial model of communications, and they don't know very much about community media and that reciprocal two-way model that you've described. Um, yeah. What, what, what would you, if, if, you know, if, 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 if you can offer some advice, what might it be in terms of why we need to plan for this different and, and invest in this different model? Uh, for, for me, uh, basically in England, uh, England community media as well as radio media also uh, very strong in line with the format. Because you know, we always, uh, I I have been listening uh, BBC Bangla program mm. from last uh, maybe uh, 30 years. <laughs> so, so BBC Bangla, BBC Bangla program very, very strong regarding the format so every time i try to learn a new new format from the bbc and adopt this format to the community radio <laughs> so because bbc invest huge money for uh, exercising the new new format of the radio so uh, i follow this format easily i this type of idea introduce to the radio station uh, it is very important for us. On the other hand, very recent B- BBC started the infographics. If you go to the BBC uh, uh, BBC website, especially in Facebook, you see uh, there are a lot of infographics now they are using. It is very, very important for us also uh, and also listeners because uh, infographics also create a very good uh, impact uh, understanding of the news context because we within uh, a few line within a few word uh, a infographics basically clarify a lot of things say data data uh, community data uh, analysis uh, political situation analysis social analysis like this so everything is possible uh, to uh, illustrated by the infographics so that idea is very very important so for me basically uh, in england uh, radio format is very very strong and I, I i i feel it is innovative also so that we are following this type of radio format well that's a really powerful message for us to co- continue to invest in bbc world service and bbc media action uh, and, and to help co-develop and uh, uh, partner with you, I suppose, rather than just you know, we're not just being a provider of content, but being a partner to help you support and create your own content as well. Um, yeah, one thing is uh, basically always we ask, please give me, please give us to the community radio format and knowledge. Do not give the program. Do not, uh, we are not ready to receive your program. But problem is in Dhaka, we have a, a BBC media action. 
always they are trying to provide central content this is a we, we several time we told central content is a enemy of the community radio central content is a enemy of the community people please do not give the content please give us knowledge please give us format please give us the capacity but they don't uh, care my views they are producing lot of content and send to the content to the radio station and they do not provide any money to the radio station this is a completely colossal yeah, we 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 kind of have the same problem here in the UK. Um, we we our community <laughs> radio stations uh, don't get uh, as much support as they maybe could be to develop skills and training and knowledge development. Yeah. Uh, and 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 that for me, this is this is where we share you know something in common is that passion and commitment for education and learning about communication as part of the process so what what yeah. just in in the last couple of minutes that we've got uh is is what would you your message be about how we can maybe link together you've talked about linking with universities about how we can support that education process and that learning process so that the community radio and the community media model of communications and media is better understood yeah i have only three point one point is building capacity we, we need a capacity so university and as well as uh uk community uh, uk media uh, radio sector also help us for building capacity because uh, you know uh, analog to digitalization analog to digitalization is a huge difference we need a huge capacity because uh, our 1000 radio broadcaster earlier only no radio program but they don't know the visual program they don't know the data analysis they don't know to the uh, visualization uh, uh, of the of the of the radio how radio vision to the community people so we need a, this type of digitalization digital transformational capacity of the community radio sector in bangladesh uh, second one is resource and development so university can help us to research uh, a level of degree research because we are doing lot of thing but we have no research uh, capacity or we have no research uh, uh, program like this and third one is uh, we need uh, some technical cooperation also so these three thing basically uh, we did it from the uk side just just one last question is the uh, you're also very active and share your knowledge and experience with people in the UNESCO networks. Um, how UNESCO, okay. Yeah, uh, how please. important is that for you? Uh, no, no, UNESCO basically in Bangladesh, uh, UNESCO is a very tiny program. They are maintaining a very small program, tiny program. They have no basically uh, program uh, support. Uh, uh, pro, uh, they, they have no capacity to support the uh, uh, new new thing so unesco is a very tidy pro, they are maintaining a very tidy area but we, we need an expert those who are involved with the digitalization digital broadcasting those who have a knowledge regarding the infographics like this and you're a big supporter of the sustainable development goals you've got that as your yes. background on your screen uh, how yeah. important how important is a link and relationship with people as, as you know champions of the sdgs the goals yeah basically from the beginning of the sdg uh, say year of the 2016 we basically harmonized uh, all community radio program with the 17 goal of the sdgs and we provided uh, uh, lots of capacity building uh, to the radio broadcasters how they cover uh, reporting about the sdg like this so still uh, if we analyze our program 170 hour program you will find all program 170 hour program per day all program aligned with the 17 goal of the uh, sdgs especially very recent mr hiran pandit is starting a project called sdg 16 sdg 16 lo uh, localization 
to throw the community radio there are two part one part is uh, mobilization the national level another part is mobilization the local level about sdg 16 uh, and uh, how uh, local people how local youth community um, how local administration connect with the sdg 16 like this there are 10 indicators is there you know the indicator of the sdg 16 it is a very very important regarding the uh, uh, regarding the uh, promoting governance promoting the governance so uh, so we basically started this program now and under the program we are providing the fellowship to the local journalist to the local broadcasters so that they can report they, they can report uh, and publish their report in line with the SDG 16 in line with 10 goal uh, 10 indicators basically there well, we'll follow that up at another occasion because I think it's really great to keep these conversations going and uh, uh, do what we can to be supportive with your work and to encourage other people here in the UK to 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 engage with you to support it because there's lots of reference points. And as I say, I would absolutely you know make this clear clear to our, our listeners and viewers is that there are, we have more to learn from your experience in Bangladesh than than maybe you can learn from the, you know, we have maybe more resources, but that it's not necessarily about the amount of resources. It's your attitude towards yeah. what you're doing. Yeah. One thing is we can create easily UK, UK, Bangladesh community media knowledge cooperation. Yeah. Uh, uh, so under the framework, we can explore the activities. We can explore the resources so that uh, every time we can organize the UK, Bangladesh, Community Media Knowledge Cooperation. Well, let's let's find a way to do that. And uh, hopefully if there's anybody who's listening to this can contribute to that and can help support it, then that would be fantastic. It's been really a great conversation. Um, you've given me so much food for, food for thought. Um, thank you very much for taking part in this discussion. We'll post it up onto our website and make it available as a podcast and as a YouTube video as well. Uh, and we'll share it via our social media platforms uh, and, and feed it back to you at some point and to anybody else who's, uh, who's, who's interested in taking this work forward. So thank you very much. following a germs journey an international dialogue about the challenge of supporting community relevant public health communications you can find us on twitter at germs journey or go to our website germsjourney.com